What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now I'm back with my original segment, Boxing Ego's first look, a tale of the tape, a sneak peek, a preview of the fight before the fight. Now it's about to go down. Tickets are already on sale. There's a great fight presented by Showtime, Al Heyman, TGB Promotions, Lou DiBella, Premier Boxing Champs. It's going down again Saturday, September 8th, live on Showtime at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, which is a great venue. Been there several times. It's a welterweight fight, a who's who of the division. Danny Swift Garcia versus Showtime Sean Porter set to fight for the vacant WBC title. Now, this title was held most recently by Keith one-time Thurman, but he's been MIA, almost like the Derrick Rose of boxing. He's been plagued with injuries. Some people speculate he's lost hunger. He got married last year. He had elbow spurs, and he had surgery for it. And he was supposed to be able to train and come back possibly last year. And his return has been slated several times and they've given dates and he just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So the belt he beat Danny Garcia for in the unification last March, he had to relinquish because he was just not active enough. Now Danny Garcia has a chance again, a crack at it versus Sean Porter, who's fought eliminator after eliminator to secure his spot to, he was trying to rematch Keith Thurman, but again, he's kind of like a champion in recess at the moment. So the WBC did the next best thing. Since Keith Thurman's not available, they made Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, the two highest ranking guys in the WBC welterweight class. It's a great fight stylistically. I really don't know who's gonna win this because you look at what Danny Garcia does. Danny Garcia is great with timing. Once it takes him a couple rounds, he has to fill you out. But once he gets a beat on you and a read on you, he does that. His last fight, coming off the Keith Thurman loss, he fought against Brandon Bam Bam Rios. The thing that was impressive, a lot of people thought Danny Garcia would win the fight, is how he won. Brandon Rios is a guy who, for all intents and purposes, is very tough. He could take head shots, he could take shots upstairs, and he had been stopped once, but it was to the body against Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley had paired up with Teddy Atlas, and they just had a really good game plan. They know Brandon Rios has had a history of like kind of ballooning up in weight and not having the most discipline and running and stuff like that. So they attacked the body, which was very smart. That's why Bradley's not even the, the biggest puncher at welterweight, but he was able to chop down that tree because they targeted the body. Now with Danny Garcia, he remained patient. Um, Brandon Rios didn't look half bad in the fight, you know? And he was real focused. And Danny Garcia clipped him. I think Brandon Rios threw out like a lazy jab. Garcia clipped him and rocked his head all types of crazy. And then Brandon Rios got knocked out. He, he did stand back up, but his legs were like done. Referee waved it off. So to see Danny Garcia, that improves his powers there even at 147. A lot of people had questions like, oh, does he have the same power he had at 140? Because he hadn't really had many sensational knockouts against like the better names at 147 and you know that was a that was a good knockout it was through a headshot sean porter he's done everything you've asked from uh he was the ibf champion fought kel brook lost his belt but since that he's fought a ton of guys you know he's just stayed active stayed disciplined and didn't get discouraged he fought keith thurman at the barclay and this is a mutual opponent they both fought keith thurman at the barclay center at different times I think, in my personal opinion, the Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, it just, that delivered, that was like a fight of the year contender, it was just all out war. Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman was cool, started off cool, I think Danny Garcia got clipped early in the first two rounds, and it made him gun shy, and as a result of him being gun shy, it took a while to open up, and then Keith Thurman kind of did the Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Tito Trinidad, where he just got on his bicycle, he knew he had secured enough rounds. Um, wasn't my favorite performance by Keith Thurman just because he gave up the later rounds like I understand there's guys like Floyd Mayweather who once he's dominated you he's not going to do anything silly in the 12th round so he might give you the 12th round and just kind of celebrate and keep his space and distance just so you don't land anything home run but Keith Thurman did that for kind of several rounds and Danny Garcia did come on a little bit he was throwing punches trying to track him down stuff like that but Keith Thurman convincingly won the Sean Porter fight they booed him, so some people thought Sean Porter even won. But now, at the Barclays Center, we're getting Danny Garcia, Sean Porter. Again, Sean Porter has bounced back nicely since 
the Kell Brook and the Keith Thurman loss. He fought eliminators, one with Andre Berto, who just beat Devin Alexander. I went to that fight. I was at the Berto versus Porter fight as well. Um, it was real rugged, real rough. Some headbutts, clashes, bleeding. Um, but Sean Porter got the job done. He's just he's rugged, and if you don't you don't know how to tame that, then it's going to be a long night and a, and a frustrating night for you. And um, Sean Porter's last fight against Adrian Granados, I also went to that. And the thing that was that was different about that fight is Sean Porter got injured. And I talked to Kenny Porter after the fight. He said that Sean Porter was like a little bit panicky because he's not used to getting injured in fight. Like he's, he hasn't been injury prone or anything like that. So it was a new experience for him. And he was like wigging out a little bit. And Kenny Porter said, you got to calm down because Granados is a tough customer. But I did think Sean Porter pulled it through, and I thought he convincingly beat Adrian Granados, which is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Adrian Granados has fought a lot of guys that, you ask a fan, it could have went either way, like the Broner fight for sure. Um, I was at that fight too. Adrian Broder versus Granados. Some people thought Broner won. I thought Broner won, but some people even had Granados winning because what he did early. So Granados is in that type of fight. I think Sean Porter clearly beat him though. So this is a good time for this fight. Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter. Again, a classic stylistic match. Both guys have done some trash talking. Sean Porter jumped in the ring after Danny Garcia knocked out Brandon Rios and kind of stole his shine and tried to interrupt his moment. I don't think Danny Garcia liked that. He was like, this is a Danny Garcia show. Fuck out of here on national TV. And all that has culminated to this. Sean Porter also did some WWE style like call outs. He got theatrical. And now they're going to fight stylistically. What the other person does well should give the other guy problems. Like what Danny Garcia does well should give Porter problems. What Porter does well should give Danny problems. Danny Garcia had this to say. I'm excited and motivated to go in there and recapture what's mine. The WBC title belongs to me. Come September 8th, I'm going to prove that I'm the best fighter in the world. My loss is behind me and has given me a chip on my shoulder to run that extra mile and train even harder. I know that Sean Porter is not on my level. I'm coming to fight him in the middle of the ring and I'm going to beat him at his game. Sean Porter responded, I'm going to force Danny Garcia to fight me, to be uncomfortable and to do things he's not used to doing in a fight. If Danny comes in being defensive and trying to hold, it may last a while. But if he comes and tries to trade with me and prove something to himself, then it will end fast. I think my style will give him problems and not allow him to pace himself. This is going to be an instant classic and I'm going to win and become a champion once again. So Sean Porter is eager to again become a, a welterweight champion. He was the IBF champion again. He beat Devin Alexander and lost to Kell Brook. So it should be a good fight, man. It should be a classic based on what they're both saying. They, they, they both say, and we know we can't hold fighters to this because fighters say one thing and then you get in there, it might be something else. But both fighters are promising action. And Danny Garcia says he's stronger than Sean Porter. And it sounds like Sean Porter believes he's stronger and more durable than Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia saying he's going to stand in the center and trade and, and beat him at his own game. I mean, we'll see. Danny Garcia is probably more the counter puncher. So we'll see if he decides to do that. If he does, it'll probably provide more of a war. Now, I am impressed with Danny Garcia's chin. I've seen him take some big shots from Zab Judah, big shot from Lucas Matisse, who's a monster puncher at 40. And at the time, Lucas Matisse had been running through guys and or knocking them out. And there's this one sequence where this was on the Mayweather Canelo undercard where Danny Garcia fought Lucas Matisse and Danny Garcia he got his mouthpiece knocked out by he had it I think he had his back on the rope got his mouthpiece knocked out by Lucas Matisse with a flush shot and they showed it and zoomed in and slow motion and he just ate it you know and got back to his his game plan so Danny Garcia has a chin and Sean Porter is also durable so that's another thing that makes this fight kind of difficult to call because they've both been champions. They know what it takes. Sean Porter has fought at higher weights as an amateur, like 165. But he's also fought even at a catch weight against Broner, right? He got dropped versus Broner. But other than that, he dominated. Danny Garcia, we don't really see him get dropped. We've seen him hurt. So both guys are durable. Both guys look focused and ready to win. And they know what's on the line. Now let's take a look at the tail of the tape. 
Danny Swift Garcia has a near perfect record of 34 and 1. Sean Porter has a record of 28, 2, and 1. He has a draw with Julio Diaz, which he later avenged. And he lost to respectable names, Keith Thurman, along with Danny Garcia. They have a mutual opponent that they both lost to. That was Keith one time Thurman. And Sean Porter also additionally lost to Kell Brook for the IBF title. Now, the age, this is what I love about these tale of the tapes. The age, same age. They're both 30 years old at this moment. Veterans, young veterans in this particular sport. Height, very close. Danny Garcia looks pretty big in the face-off pictures. He's listed at 5'8 half to Sean Porter's 5'7. So the height advantage going to Danny Garcia. This is for the WBC title. It's a welterweight fight. It will take place at 147 pounds. Both fighters must make that on Friday. Now, the reach advantage surprisingly goes to the shorter of the two. Sean Porter has a reach of 69 and a half inches to Danny Garcia, an inch shorter. His reach is listed at 68 and a half inches. Now, check it. September 8th is going down. This is a much anticipated, long waited, a great clash of styles. Danny Garcia versus Showtime, Sean Porter. You also have the dads involved, Kenny Porter. You have Angel Garcia. So, They've been pretty mum. They haven't said anything too crazy right now, but you know tensions rise during fight week, so the final press conference, things of that sort, the weigh-in, you might see some tempers flaring on both sides. You know, guys are hungry, trying to make weight, stuff like that, and they're ready to get in there and handle business. This is a great fight. Shout-out to Al Heyman. Shout-out to Steven Espinoza, Showtime, and everybody involved. I'm really looking forward to this particular one. Drop your fight predictions in the comment section. Are you choosing Danny Swift Garcia or Showtime Sean Porter? Garcia versus Porter. It's about to go down. WBC title at stake. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego the future of boxing.